Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmentor. Welcome to my next episode in my series for introducing Python to .NET developers. In this series, we look at the features of .NET that really make it shine, and we explore the parallels in Python as a way to sort of learn the Python language. This time, we're talking about properties. So let's start out with C Sharp. Over here, I have a person object, and you can see they have an age and a first name and a last name, and here we want to get their full name. This is computed, and let's just go look over here at this whole object. And you see these are actually fields, not properties. And of course, if we want to sort of get a computed, there's no such thing as a computed field. So in some languages, you might write code like this and have a getter and setter method. And of course, this is a not a really good representation of how you would do this. In .NET, what we would do is we would say, you know, no, 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 no. I realize you're kind of new, but uh, let's not do this. What we're going to do instead is we're going to have a property called full name. Oops, I have a property of type string called full name. And it's only going to be a getter, right? You can have getters and setters, or you can have just getters. Let's get rid of all of this. Perfect. So now we can just return the same code. Here we kind of uh, return the first name plus the last name and account for a possible white space if either of those are empty. Okay, so let's go over here and fix our code. Of course, that's gone and that's generally a good thing. Here we have a full name property. You can see the members look different than the properties in IntelliSense. Um, and while we're at it, we probably would like to go over here and update these as well. Now in .NET, this is important because changing from a field to a property is a binary incompatible operation. So if you're like linking to a library, it's not in your same project, that would actually be a breaking change. You'd have to recompile um, to make this still work. But um, so the recommendation, of course, is that you start from properties for the most time, most of the time, in case you want to introduce some sort of validation and things like that. So here's sort of the same code with properties, and we can see if we run it, should still work the same. We create our person object here. We set their properties and then we also get this computed field full name which of course prints out Jeff Thompson which as we saw is computed from these two variables. Uh, variables. Okay so let's go see what Python has in terms of properties. Here's a very very similar bit of code. We have a person object and they have an age and a first name and a last name and I'm using I'm using the naming conventions that are um, Pythonic so um, of course, I copied this over and left some semicolons there. That's unnecessary. So these, again, are just fields. And again, we have a get full name uh, method here. Let's go look at this. Here you can see we're setting these uh, fields. We're initializing them to nothing just so they show up and are sort of consistently there. And then we can set them from the outside just like we were in the C Sharp app. And here we have this uh, get full name as well. So let's do the first thing just like we did uh, with um, in C sharp. Let's go over here and make this a property rather than a getter method. So we can come over here and have this full name. All right now, that still looks like a property, but if we add a decorator, an at property decorator, then we can come over here into our app. Of course, this doesn't exist, but if we say dot, we can have full name. Here you can see again, it looks different. It's got a P instead of a F, and it's not a method. Right from the, consuming it from the outside, it doesn't look like a method that is. So if I run this, you'll see we get the exact same output, Jeff Thompson. Right now, if we wanted to be able to set these, let's just do this for first name. Let's first of all make it private, so we can do that by giving it a double underscore, and the it'll get renamed. You can see in the IntelliSense there is no first name, and there's also no way to access the under under first name. It actually gets renamed to something else. So. This sort of gives us our private access. This is slightly more cumbersome than what happens in .NET with its auto properties. It's more like .NET from original uh, rather than, uh, say, .NET 3, where they introduce the auto properties. Okay, so then let's have a method that's going to expose this again. So we say we would just say at property def um, first name. And all we're going to do is just, for now, we'll just return self dot under, under first name. Okay, so if we run this, it's going to crash, and it'll say, well, that's a read-only a read -only property. You can't set it. And the error is happening right here where we're trying to set it. So we can also make this a property that you can set, just like we have. So we would say first name dot setter, kind of a weird syntax, but uh, this is where you 
have this sort of the set function that's the equivalent of the you know, little set in the property in .NET. And here we have a name. And we'll just say instead, let's do a little trick here just so we can show that something's happening. Let's say equals name.upper. Okay, so you can see when we set the name, this function got called. Let me take you over here. When we did this code, it's actually called the setter, which then turned Jeff into uppercase Jeff. And then when we print out full name, of course, you can see it's capital Jeff Thompson. So let's just recap. We can have read-only properties, and we can have read-write properties as well in Python. And you do that by creating functions, one for the getter and one for the setter. And then you use the property, and then property name.setter. And there's some other things about adding or removing properties as well. So hopefully uh, you found that useful and interesting. And I encourage you to use properties in the same place that they make sense if you're doing this in C-sharp, where they're computed, where you need validation. However, you don't need to sort of add them early, right, uh, for a sort of runtime compatible reasons, because you don't really compile your code. It's interpreted, so there's no real breaking change to make that change there. All right, thanks. See you next time.